California and Texas are the USA's two largest states, contributing a huge chunk into the country's economy. In this video, we're going to compare these two states. But before that, let's dig into a bit of history. You see, both California and Texas used to be Spanish colonies. After the Spaniards left, the colonies were incorporated into Mexican rule. On December 29, 1845, the United States Congress admitted Texas as a constituent state of the Union. Later, both were ceded the United States after the Americans won the Mexican-American War in 1846 to 1848. The name Texas means friend in Caddo, a Native American language that's now critically endangered, having only 25 surviving speakers. California officially became part of the USA following the Treaty of Cahenga that was signed on January 13, 1847. Let's move on to comparisons. California is a state in the Pacific region in the United States. With 39.5 million residents, it's the most populous U.S. state and the third largest by area. It's also the world's 34th most populous subnational entity. Texas is not as populous, but it is the largest state in North America. It spreads 268,596 square miles. It's bigger than France. The beautiful state of California is home to a number of different climatic zones, ranging from snow-capped mountain ranges to gleaming sunny beaches and deserts, the Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert. Best Places to Travel If you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of city life or are looking to be one with nature, California is a breathtakingly superb place to go to. Here's a list of the places that will satisfy any travel preferences. One. The Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks These two national parks are located next to each other in the southern Sierra Nevada mountains. One is home to the giant sequoia trees that grow taller than 200 feet tall. While there, don't miss the amazing General Sherman, the world's tallest tree, which towers an awesome 275 feet and a trunk greater than 102 feet in circumference. The Sherman of Sequoia National Park is the largest living tree by volume in the world. Its age is somewhere between 1,800 to 2,700 years old. That itself will surely take your breath away. Both parks are popular and frequented by backpackers. Number 2. Napa Valley – The Onophiles Paradise For all you wine lovers out there, Napa Valley is your prime destination. It has charming bed and breakfasts and many world-class spas. It's even got hot air balloon rides and guided wine tours. What more could you ask for a perfect vacation? Number 3. Yosemite National Park Nestled in the Sierra Nevada mountains of central eastern California, this national park has it all. From diverse wildlife to glaciers, it is a must-go destination for nature lovers and backpackers. Number 4. Death Valley National Park Want to keep things from getting dry? Let's get deserts out of the way. East of the Sierra Nevada, in the inner base of the Great Basin and the Mojave Desert, lies the Death Valley National Park, the largest national park in the USA. Though it may be the driest and lowest place in North America, it still offers a variety of outdoor activities, colorful dunes, the ruins of ghost towns, nature safaris, and viewings of even snow-capped mountains. It's like no other place on Earth, that's for sure. So, maybe you're not so into the whole nature thing and prefer the fabulous city lights and the comforts of the indoors, luxurious hotels and fine dining. Well, look no further. Here's a list of the best cities and towns to visit and events to be part of. Number 5. Catalina Island Santa Catalina is a charming little town in Catalina Island. Here you'll find gorgeous natural vistas and great food. You can reach the island by boat, helicopter or private plane. Number 6. Los Angeles A cultural hub and an ethnic boiling pot, Hollywood and lots of beaches, Malibu City's beaches west of LA, Disneyland and Universal Studios. Need I say more? Number 7. Alcatraz Island San Francisco's infamous Alcatraz prison and the island of Alcatraz used to be a high security prison from 1934 to 1963. Now abandoned, it contains a lighthouse, the Fort Alcatraz, and a military prison and is a popular tourist attraction. Number 8. San Diego 
With fabulous beaches, the upscale La Hala Beach neighborhood, and the fascinating SeaWorld Aquarium, San Diego will give you that perfect beach destination. Number 9. Cannabis Legalization California is infamous for its recreational marijuana legalization. Today, it's one of the top Kush capitals in the world, which makes it the dope place to plan your weed vacation in. And whoever said stoners are lazy, true or not, stoners have a lot of fun things to do in California. If you're a diehard cannabis enthusiast and want to learn everything from growing your buds to making concentrates and edibles, just head to the SoCal High Times Cannabis Cup, where the main event is. That's where cannabis chefs battle it out to create the best weed-infused dishes. Some events even teach fans the ropes, so don't worry. Hippie Hill Annual Gathering is a public marijuana gathering in the San Francisco area, where weed lovers gather to celebrate. A chance to smoke up with the most chill people you'll find is a great opportunity. Finally, the 420 Hotels. You heard it, some hotels provide you with first-class hotel rooms where you can toke in. Get ready to get comfy. Well, you can't argue that California is a great place, but how about down in cowboy country? Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Texas, where everything is much bigger. When it comes to absolutely gorgeous places, Texas doesn't fall behind. Texas can be classified into four main zones, the Gulf Coastal Plains, Interior Lowlands, Great Plains, and the Range Province. Climatically, a huge chunk of Texas, beginning from the east, is of the oceanic type. Much of the southern coast is hot semi-arid. Much of its north is cold semi-arid. It's only in western Texas, west of Austin, that you find hot deserts. The extreme west of Texas is dominated by cold deserts, whose temperatures plummet to colder levels that reach about 50 degrees Fahrenheit 14 degrees Celsius, during summer. Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, El Paso, and most of Texas's big cities reach averages of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot, much like California. Where California has earthquakes, Texas has its own devastations, thunderstorms. The number of tornadoes in the state is the highest in the U.S., averaging 139 a year. They occur mostly in North Texas between April and June. If you love chasing tornadoes, Texas is the place to head for. Texas has its share of scenic spots, too. You'll find some pretty strange places in Texas that are just downright weird. Number 1. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre House the house featured in the 1974 and then again in the 2003 and 2006 thriller movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is now a restaurant. That's right, the creepy 6,000 square foot countryside house now serves delicious food. Now called the Grand Central Cafe and Club Car Bar, it bears little resemblance to the sinister locale seen in the film. Number 2. The Cathedral of Junk the Cathedral of Junk in Austin is probably the weirdest public showpiece you'll ever see. The massive thing is made up of all kinds of oddities like bicycle parts, car tires, skateboards, road and hotel signs. Number 3. Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame Dedicated to the women who played an important part in cowboy history, the Cowboy Museum and Hall of Fame features those badass women who knew how to match up with the men in whiskey drinking. Bottoms up! The museum holds more than 5,000 objects in its artifact collection. Artifacts such as guns, saddles, and cowboy, or rather cowgirl, hats that belong to cowgirls in the past adorn its collection. Number 4. Luke A Texan with the surname of Luke decided to clear-cut trees in a pattern to allow his name to be read from space. Egotistical much? Number 5. Boomtowns if you find yourself in West Texas, you can take a detour to several abandoned boom towns that once sprung around oil fields. They're ghost towns now, but once they were home to thousands of oil field workers in the Permian Basin. Number 6. Ransom Canyon's Steelhouse This was the house where artist Robert Bruno lived. Situated just west of Lubbock, this house was constructed on a 2,300 square feet plot of land and is made up of 150 tons of steel. Its futuristic design makes it look like a heavily armored spaceship. It's used occasionally to host art exhibitions. Number 7. Kimball Art Museum 
located at 3333 Camp Bowie Boulevard, Fort Worth, Texas 76107. The Kimball Art Museum contains a strong collection full of masterworks. The architecture of the galleries is beautifully designed. Number 8. Traveling Man in Dallas The most famous metal sculpture in Texas is the Traveling Man in Dallas. The story goes that he was crafted from a disposed locomotive train. There are three parts to his story. He first emerges from the ground as if emerging to take his place among us mortals. The second is him sitting playing the guitar. Finally, in the last piece, he's seen in stride as if he's headed somewhere. The three parts to his story are situated in different places in Dallas, so you'll have a merry chase ahead of you should you choose to track them down. Number 9. Cadillac Ranch A pair of architects decided to take their love for the Cadillac to the next level. They designed and created the famous Cadillac Ranch, which has Cadillacs springing out of the ground facing skyward. In recent times, the Cadillacs have been spray painted by people, giving them a vibrant and colorful look. Number 10. Big Bend National Park Located in southwest Texas, the Big Bend National Park includes the Chisos Mountains and the Chihuahua Desert. Chisos Mountains The tall, rugged landscape filled with jagged brown mountains of Chisos will give you a healthy respect for the beauty of Mother Earth. Situated in the Big Bend area, the Chisos Mountains, or simply Chisos, span 40 square miles and are within Big Bend National Park. Number 11. Santa Elena Canyon While you're in the Big Bend National Park, you can choose to hike in the Santa Elena Canyon, a very narrow gorge with straight walls. The entire hike is pretty long, but you can choose your length. The hike is an easy one for groups of all ages, perfect for families. The terrain is relatively flat alongside the Rio Grande. There's an area where you have to climb up some steps, but there are railings if needed. The silt in the water has worn away a rift between rocks over thousands of years, so there are now two high cliffs. Number 12. Pedernales Falls State Park Ever dreamed about camping beside a chunning cascading river? This park near Austin offers you an opportunity to camp by a stretch of six miles of the river. Here you can choose between a variety of activities like horseback riding, hiking, and off-road bicycling. Number 13. Padre Island National Seashore Padre Island National Seashore separates the Gulf of Mexico from the Laguna Madre, one of a few hypersaline lagoons in the world. The park protects 70 miles of coastline, dunes, prairies, and wind tidal flats teeming with wildlife. The Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle is abundant on the island, and it's also home for over 380 bird species. The island is perfect for a quiet, peaceful retreat from everyday life. Number 14. Guadalupe Park Standing majestically tall with an elevation of 8,751 feet, Guadalupe Park is the highest natural point in Texas. Located in the Guadalupe Mountains Range in West Texas, you can camp at Pine Springs and Dog Canyon campgrounds for a wonderful camping experience under the iridescent sunset sky and wake up to a fantastic sunrise. Okay. So maybe you're hyped up and ready to plan your vacation. Maybe you've got those tickets already. Heck, maybe even you're ready to move. But hold on. Isn't it a good idea to maybe think about how safe both these states are? How safe are the roads? Is it okay to be walking alone at night through a deserted part of the city? This year's report says there are about 4.5 incidents per 1,000 people in California compared to the country average of 3.7 crimes. Moving on to Texas, now we all know the trusty sheriffs have a reputation for being America's most badass cops, but do these stereotypes apply in real life? According to SafeWise.com, like California, this year 16% of Texans say they've experienced a violent crime in the past 12 months. 23% say they've experienced property crime. 31% of Texans believe murder by a stranger is most likely to happen to them. If that hasn't set you off, and if you're relatively comfortable about your safety, Perhaps you're thinking of relocating, but maybe you're concerned about the environment and how energy efficient your city is, and whether the waste is disposed of cleanly and efficiently. After all, environmental issues are a big concern in the world. When it comes to Texas, things are looking pretty good as renewable energy production. According to the Texan, Texas generates 27.6% .6 
used by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, which covers more than 26 million Texas electric customers. On May 2nd this year, Texas generated a whopping 59.3%, setting a one-day record. However, they go on to say that the oil industry, oil which Texas is the sixth largest producer in the world, with about 5 billion barrels, lost nearly 51,000 jobs. Regardless, because of this, more companies can go green while the city of San Antonio doesn't plan to go 100% renewable energy. They are, however, committed to becoming relatively carbon neutral. You go, cowboy. Let's look to the east side of things, where California isn't letting up on the competition. California is a big place with a lot of people and a major metropolitan city. Silicon Valley, the major tech hub of the world, is in many ways the pride of California. That also means tons of energy consumption. But surprisingly, according to the Washington Post, California can cut greenhouse gas emissions by a lot. The average Californian burns about 7,000 kilowatt hours. That's a little more than half the energy consumption of an average American. How do they do it? The state's been setting up a couple of rules like regulating high prices. Energy prices are high in California, so naturally people use less of it. However, this isn't all that California is doing. A project called Pure Water Monterey Project, which is basically an advanced water purification process that captures water from four sources. Domestic waste, agricultural produce wash water, the water used during irrigation called return flows, and storm water. This improves the flow of water in the Carmel River habitat, which is extremely beneficial for the wildlife and the environment around the Carmel River. This cuts back on the population of ponds and general water pollution. That means less ocean discharge by taking wastewater and purifying it for reuse. This isn't all California has up its sleeve, though. The solar energy generating systems in the Mojave Desert and wind farms in Altamont Pass and Tehachapi Pass, to name a few, are major energy generators. Officials say that California can go 100% renewable by 2050. Isn't that just amazing? This is all for your comparison video, folks. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this and don't forget to hit the bell icon to keep yourself updated whenever we post new content. See ya and have a wonderful day.